All new at six, bionic limbs controlled by the mind. This is new technology being developed right here in New England, and it's really giving amputees newfound mobility. Yeah, the revolutionary procedure is underway at Brigham and Women's Hospital, and Dr. Malika Marshall gives us a first look as part of our Boston Next series. It's a marvel of technology, robotic limbs that move like the real thing and are controlled by the mind. For these amputees... It's great. It's kind of crazy. The first time I saw it, it was really, really cool. It's a game changer in the making. These smart limbs being developed at MIT are possible because of the Ewing amputation. The procedure developed between MIT and Brigham and Women's Hospital protects the nerves and muscles so the limb can continue to communicate with the brain. So being both the scientist and the user, I have uh, advantages that other people don't have. MIT professor Hugh Herr helped develop the surgery and is leading development of the robotic limbs. He's also a double amputee himself. My legs are basically power tools. So I go home at night and I, I put my batteries into a charger. Herr uses a form of robotic limbs. But what's different about the smart limbs is that the Ewing amputation allows the brain to control the machine. When we did our first human patient and we put the bionic limb on him, and we saw natural movements emerged, uh, you know, emerging through the mechatronics uh, in natural ways. It was truly exhilarating. So it's sort of like an extension of your body. Rebecca Mann, a Ewing amputee, tried out the robotic leg. Pretending I'm pointing and flexing my foot, and I feel my foot pointing and flexing, and the result of that is that the robot points and flexes. And being able to kind of have something that I can control with my mind still, even though my foot's not there, it kind of, it, it brings everything full circle. Brandon Corona injured his leg in Afghanistan and became the first veteran to have the Ewing amputation. It starts to begin to feel like your own limb. He's now training to run the Boston Marathon in 2020. And this September, Rebecca and Brandon ran the Falmouth Road Race with fellow amputee Tammy Jerome. We started it together, we finished it together, and we pushed each other to be able to do it. That's this fantastic. group was brought together through the Stepping Strong Center, created at the Brigham by the family of marathon bombing survivor Jillian Rennie. The grants awarded by Stepping Strong are part of what made the Ewing amputation possible, paving the way for the future of prosthetics. It's a wonderful experience as a researcher to, to put something on a, a person that has a missing limb, uh, to put a robot on their leg and, and um, they walk away and start crying or laughing and giggling and saying, my gosh, I have my body back, I have my leg back, I have my life back. One of the next steps in the prosthetics project at MIT is designing new sockets. The goal is to create an improved interface between the amputation and the robotic limb. I'm Dr. Malika Marshall, WBZ News.